Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost. I'm the Digital Imaging Evangelist at Adobe. We're going to spend the next few minutes looking at three of my favorite features in this release of Photoshop. Sky replacement, the neural filters, and the pattern preview. I'll start with this image. We have a number of different layers. All of them have a different pepper on them. And I want to make a seamless pattern that will tile. So in order to view this, I'll choose View and then Pattern Preview. I'll select the Move tool and make sure that the Auto Select Layer is enabled. And then we'll just zoom out a bit. Now I can start clicking on any of these layers. It will Auto Select that in the Layers panel. And then I can start repositioning them. I can also select on a layer and just use the arrow keys if I just want to nudge them down or over. So at this point, I'm liking that. I might want to move this a bit more over to the right and maybe just a bit down. And then let's go ahead and save this as a pattern. So in the pattern panel, I will click on the plus icon and go ahead and save this as a pattern. Then let's move to this next image of this box. I want to apply the pattern on the box, so I'll click on it. That will add it as a pattern fill layer, which is automatically clipped to the layer below it. To make it look a little bit more realistic, I'll change it to the multiply blend mode. Now, the only problem is, is that the pattern isn't following the perspective of the box. In order to use the perspective warp, I'll just convert this to a smart object and then choose edit and perspective warp. I'll drag out the first plane, then I'll drag out the second, and finally the third plane. Then I can tap the W key, which will take me to the warp mode. And then all I need to do is reposition these so that they match the perspective of that box. I'll go ahead and apply that. And if I ever wanted to make a change, that's as easy as double clicking on the pattern fill that will edit the contents of the smart object in its own layer. I'll go ahead and view both of those and then double click on the pattern. And then we can change the scale of the pattern. We can change the angle. We can reposition it. And when I save this, we can see that it's been updated in the parent file. In fact, if I ever want to just swap out to a different pattern, I can select that pattern. Likewise, we can go in and maybe change the scale here. And when I save, it will apply it to that parent document. Excellent. Let's go ahead and close this. All right. In this next image, we're going to use the new neural filters. The key here is to convert the layer into a smart object so that we can apply the filter as a smart filter. I'll select the beta and then the colorize option. And Adobe Sensei using artificial intelligence and machine learning is going to colorize my photograph for me. Now, of course, I can make changes. There's a color swatch right here. So if I don't like that red color, we can switch to a blue and then click in the preview area in order to apply that. Because this was applied as a smart filter, I can always go in and change the attributes of the filter, including the opacity and the blend mode. I'll switch this to 80% opacity and the smart filter has its own math. So if I select the brush tool, I can paint with black in order to hide any of the colors that I don't want. And if I see any areas that the filter might have missed, it's easy to create a new layer, set that blend mode to color, and use the brush tool in order to quickly fill in those areas. Excellent. Let's move to sky replacement. Here the original was shot as a horizontal. I need it to fill a square. But since sky replacement only fills the sky area, I'll just grab my marquee tool create a selection, and use free transform in order to transform that boring blue sky so that it fills that whole area. Then I'll choose Edit, Sky Replacement, and I can choose from several of the different presets. I can add a rainbow, I can make this look more stormy, or I can choose to use my own sky. I'll give it a name, and then we can customize it, flipping the direction, as well as changing the scale, I'll use the sky move tool in order to reposition it and then change the temperature as well as the brightness. We can also change the way that the sky is blended with the foreground as well as the lighting and color adjustments. I'll output this to new layers so that at any time I can go back in and make changes. And unfortunately with that, we are out of time. Everyone, I hope you stay safe and enjoy the rest of Adobe Max.